hello, hello, hello. That's my five seconds of pretending that I have energy for the entire video. So enjoy it while it lasts. Today, I think I'm going to talk about how to recognize toxic people. It feels like something that a lot of people have talked about, but those people don't have my perspective, so get used to it. The first thing I would say is if you feel like there's something off, there probably is. For example, I once walked into church to see that someone knew what's there. I was a father of eight children, seven or eight, don't remember, doesn't matter that much. And I saw him and instantly just had this feeling of discomfort in the pit of my stomach. It was like, ew, I don't want him anywhere near me. To be fair, the rest of my thought was he's an alcoholic and he beats his wife and children. So I've been scratching my neck, leave me alone. <laughs> turns out, I don't know if he was an alcoholic, but it turns out that he was in fact abusive. And I was really kind of annoyed at myself because I had sort of given up and ignored that and was like, you know, just give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe he's not that terrible person. Maybe I'm a terrible person and I'm just, you know, being a judgmental asshole. Turns out he was in fact an abusive person. And I was kind of mad at myself for giving him the benefit of the doubt even for a moment. And that's not to say, you know, you see somebody that, you know, looks like they have different opinions than you and you just immediately hate them. But if you look at someone and you, you hear them speak and you talk to them, or you even just meet them and you have a weird feeling about them, don't treat them badly, but don't ignore it either. I know people say this all the time, but it's true. You can pick up on things unintentionally, subconsciously, whatever, that up here seems totally irrational. And I feel like a crazy person even saying that, but it's true. <laughs> Second, I would say that something you need to look out for when it comes to toxic people or to people that are going to be harmful. I hate the word toxic because it's so overused. Yes, I live next to an airport. I've mentioned this like three times already, but I live next to an airport. <laughs> so one thing that I would say to look for, you know, if you just met someone and you tend to be taken advantage of by people, you tend to, you know, be attracted to people who are going to, who end up being harmful or abusive, or those people tend to sort of be attracted to you, the really, really charming, perfect people are too good to be true. It's not to say that nice people don't exist. Someone can be nice and sweet and lovely and non-harmful, but if someone is just too nice, that can be a red flag that they are hiding something or that they are sort of love bombing you and then once you've sort of let them in and started to trust them, that they will then become, you know, let some of their truer self out and become harmful to your mental health, physical, whatever. So just watch out. And again, I'm not saying to be mean to them. If you feel like you need to avoid someone, if you just come out of a horrible relationship and you just don't trust anyone, I get that. I wholeheartedly understand that. I've been going to church, to the, a new church for a little over a year now. And only in the past three months have I actually started getting to know people and actually socializing. I would go to church, sit on a bench by myself. I was more than happy to sit on a bench by myself. Draw, read, whatever. Listen to the sermon and leave. I didn't talk to anybody. And it's not that anybody there was terrible, 
that was just what I needed to do to protect myself because I have a tendency to trust terrible people. That's who I grew up with. I grew up with very abusive, very neglectful parents. And I've had to learn how to not be taken in by people that are too good to be true and then too bad to be true. <laughs> Another thing I would say is don't let them test your boundaries. Now, obviously, everyone is going to cross your boundaries at one time or another. That's just human nature. We're stupid or we're careless or we're thoughtless or we get too tired and we decide to rely on somebody when they've specifically said, hey, I'm not available after six o'clock because I'm spending time with my family or whatever. That's one thing. But if they seem to be intentionally doing their best just to push you a little further than you want to go, and they're like, oh, but I just need you so much. And you're just, you're just so important. And I just can't do this without you. And you're just such a sweet, wonderful person. Again, watch out for that. Don't let people take advantage of you. I'm preaching to the choir here, okay? Don't get mad at me for preaching at you. I'm preaching to the choir. Another thing I would say is, if someone puts you down, there's a difference between, hey, you know, what you did back there like hurt me. And if you could maybe not do that when you're around me, that would be nice. If someone says, you know, hey, you're doing a thing and I feel like it's kind of inappropriate. And if you could do that only when you're in your own home or if you could not do that when you're around me, that would be great. You know, or if they say, hey, it seems like you have a tendency to be really loud in social situations and it kind of hurts my ears and like, I love you and you're super fun to be around, but if you could just try to tone it down a tiny bit so that you're not causing other people discomfort, that would be great. There's a difference between that and someone saying, ooh, you're just a little, you're wearing that. And not even, not even something that obvious, but if someone is constantly just taking little, little nitpicky things from your personality, from your character, from your values, from your appearance, and it's you, you've always sort of come away with a bad taste in your mouth and you're like, I feel icky. I didn't like that. But you just don't quite have enough that you feel like you can say something about it. That might be a red flag. And by might be, I mean, it is. <laughs> if someone is constantly picking you apart, and especially if they are making you feel like you're crazy for being upset by them, by their bad behavior, that's a huge red flag. Another one is if you try setting boundaries, this sort of relates to my first or second point. If you try setting boundaries, and they break them and then they try to manipulate you into just being okay with it. The manipulation part is huge. Just manipulation of any kind in general. You will learn to pick it up if you pay attention. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> if someone apologizes to you but their way of apologizing is more a way of guilting you for being hurt by their bad behavior. That's a red flag. If someone's way of apologizing goes something like, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I'm such a terrible person. You should just never talk to me again. I'm just a horrible person. <clears throat> I'm such a horrible person and I don't deserve you. And you're just, you're so right. I'm just such a terrible person. I'm never gonna do that again. You should just not be friends with me anymore. It's manipulation. It's not okay. If they're trying to gaslight you into thinking that you know, you've hurt them by setting a boundary or by being hurt by their bad behavior. That's not okay. Not okay. Ever. 
feel like I sound too waffly because I go back and forth and I'm like, this isn't okay. But then I'm like, but, but here's my butt. <laughs> Especially if someone has been abused, they can tend to sort of be that way unintentionally, you know, because that's how you appease your abuser. A lot of the time is by just admitting that you're just a horrible person and they were right and just please forgive me. <sighs> but I'm pretty sure you can tell it and by pretty sure I mean you are. It, so long as you cultivate the, you know, understanding, so long as you pay attention, you can tell the difference between someone who genuinely thinks that that's the way to handle conflict because that's how they've been taught, that's how they've been, it's been beaten into them, figuratively or literally, and someone who's using it to beat you down. There's a difference, you will be able to tell. <laughs> Maybe not at first, but that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to help you learn, okay? <laughs> I don't typically do like pigtails. Why is it called pigtails? Pigs have one tail, not two. And they certainly don't have one on every butt cheek. Why do we call them pigtails? And I mean, if you don't have super curly hair, they don't look like pigtails anyways. Why are we calling them this? Deal with it. Hello, how are you? I am hot and tired and hot and tired. This is why you don't live next to an airport. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Hello. Hello, friends. It is the day after I recorded the first part of the video and I I was in the middle of talking and forgot what my point was so I guess I'm just here to say uh, I will probably remake this video once I think of what the last point was because it was really good and I'm really annoyed that I forgot it so thank you for sticking around even though I forgot what I was gonna say and I will see you next time, I guess. Now to go edit all of this because there's a lot of me laughing and making random faces. Yes, I fully intend to make a bloopers reel at some point. Maybe at the end of this video. I don't know. But thanks for sticking around and bye bye.